well. Two days later, I had gone to bed, you know, everything from what I knew seemed, you know, like a normal night. I woke up that morning, I was in, the next morning I was in the bathroom and I happened to look down at my left arm and I saw maybe a two millimeter long metal protruding object uh, sticking out of my left arm, you know, in my forearm. And I actually pulled it out and a small drop of blood came out of the arm. And without thinking about it, I nearly was going to throw it away in the trash, but something looked strange about it. It looked almost like uh, an Omega sign symbol, you know, was the shape of it. It was, you know, very thin, uh, pretty fragile type object. And so I had my father look at it who, you know, is a very skeptical person and said that he thought it was maybe uh, shaving off of the railing, you know, on the balcony, but the balcony, the shape, you know, it was that they were colored white. This object was gray to black, you know, like more of a matte color, like a gunmetal color to it. You know, it, was, it did it looked nothing like that, you know. And so I thought it was strange and I made the comment to him that I wanted to have this analyzed, you know. So I, my mom had just gone to the grocery store that day and um, had bought brand new Ziploc bags. And so I got a Ziploc bag and I put the object in it and I put the, the Ziploc baggie inside of my hat. So what I did is I put the bag underneath my wallet and my keys and put it on the suitcase that was on the floor. So I had it in like a secure spot and I went to bed. So the next, when I woke up the next morning, I just had the feeling to look at it. You know, I wanted to, I was interested in it. So I decided to look at it again. And when I proceeded to get the bag out of my hat, which was in the exact same spot as I put it, mind you, the bag had a very unusual hole on the one corner, you know, end of the bag, and the object was nowhere to be found. Which, so I, you know, from there I was wondering, you know, maybe someone had tampered with it or taken it, you know, so I went around and I asked my sister and my mom and my father, and they kind of looked at me with glazed eyes, you know, wondering what I'm talking about, you know. They did not do it, you know, and uh, nor did anyone come in my room. I'm a pretty light sleeper generally, so n no one came in my room and messed with it either, nor would have any reason to, so it was just gone, you know. Now, did anything unusual happen the night that before you woke up well no actually it was the following night is when when something strange very strange happened actually um, I had a very vivid encounter with a blue gray you know f fuzzy because that's all I can describe it as it had hair all over its body you know entity was kneeling down on the floor next to me it was pretty small only maybe three feet tall but it was it was stocky you know it, it was it was not really skinny or really really big but it was you know a, a stocky type shape to it and uh, I didn't really see any nose or anything like that but I remember it talking to me but it's strange because I don't remember clearly a voice but I understood what it was saying to me you know and it I remember it telling me something you know completely mind-boggling. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. I mean, it was, it like shattered my reality. I remember it specifically saying that when I woke up, I would forget what it told me. And that's exactly what happened. I remember for maybe 10, 15 seconds when I woke up, I could not believe what I heard. And then all of a sudden, I just could not remember it anymore at all. Now, had you put the artifact that you found in your arm and this visit or this dream together at all? I, you know, I kind of did because it just seemed very coincidental that I would have such a vivid experience or, or dream or encounter, you know, and then have this this bag incident happen, that happened the day before just seems a little too coincidental for me.
it is actually a hole. It's not just a, a tear There's a, or a wrinkle. There is a hole there. It's a, about a centimeter. Uh, we have photographs of it that are, you can see its size. It's roughly crescent shaped. I'll see um, the actual opening itself. I'm going to try to get it better focused. That's what it looks like. You notice that the right at the opening, the plastic is very finely puckered. And then right there is where the damage is. Right there. Now I'm going to zoom in. You can see there's little bits of debris. We don't know exactly what the source is. And a small bit of discoloration, which shows up much better under enhancement. And little trace bits of discoloration right at the opening, which might be, we speculate, from the witness itself. I'm going to have to be a little bit ambivalent about what we can conclude so far. Um, I would say that I would strongly leaning towards the conclusion that the damage to the evidence was caused by something hot on the inside that heated up quickly and um, caused the hole in the bag. I'm not able to determine what happened to the object that was had been placed in the bag earlier. There doesn't seem to be very much evidence of that. There is some evidence on some of the photomicrographs of some de debris or residue that could be um, could be anything. Uh, some of them appear to have a reddish color. There is some speculation that some of the witnesses' blood could be there, uh, but it's right now it's speculation. We haven't got any evidence of blood. Um, it's since the evidence is more than a year old and we could have possibly been exposed to high heat. I wouldn't expect to find any blood cells per se. Uh, there could be a little hemoglobin left over. Um, we might be able to find that out with the test. The, however, the amounts are, are very, very small that we're talking about. The, uh, the why questions here that one wants to ask, um, I can't answer those questions. I'm not sure I can ask them all properly. Uh, why this object would be removed, how it, uh, you know, why the particular method of removal as opposed to just simply taking the bag while the witness slept. Um, none of that we can hope to answer at this point. Um, those are bigger questions. What we can, I think, reasonably conclude is that um, that the damage to the bag uh, was caused by something other than someone simply cutting the bag open or tearing the bag open. Uh, if you simply wanted to remove the object from the bag, you would open the bag at the opening and reach in and grab the object. So um, we have a very interesting case here. I think there's some hope we can further corroborate the witness's testimony. And that's about as far as we can go. Beyond that, we need more information that right now we don't have.